it's a little bit after 10.30. If you would, find your a seat, and we will get started shortly. Front row Joe. And Roger now. <laughs> Oh shoot, it's uh, hope everybody's had a great summer. Welcome back to our faculty and uh, I can say that our staff have been uh, eagerly here all summer uh, serving our students and uh, enrolling students left and right and it has been a great summer, but more importantly, it's all about uh, moving forward. We had a, a retreat a couple of weeks ago uh, uh, with some uh, of our key leaders across the, our, our departments and one of the things that, uh, that I shared about them, uh, with them, was a story about a frog. And so one of my good friends is the athletic director of West Virginia University. If you haven't watched, he's been in the news a lot lately uh, with uh, whether or not his basketball coach works for him or he's resigned. But uh, Ren Baker's from Oklahoma, uh, southeastern Oklahoma, uh, was at Rogers State. And uh, on it, one of his reporters trying to get him off of uh, the, the seriousness of the topic asked, uh, hey, what's that frog doing right behind you? And uh, uh, Ren uh, basically said, well, that's interesting that you asked this question about this frog. He goes, it's pretty interesting. I went, when I was the assistant athletic director at Mizzou, I went to a donor's house or office, and he gave it to me as a gift. And, and, and the, the donor gave it to me, and uh, like, you know, what am I getting a frog for? And uh, the gentleman says, what can frogs not do? And Ren's stumped. Um, a master's degree from Oklahoma State and he says I don't know I'm clueless and the donor says frogs cannot jump backwards and so all the trials and tribulations that you've had in the past by the way Wren was at Mizzou when the Ferguson uh, protest took place don't look backwards look forwards and so uh, it's been bumpy choppy, choppy waters uh, for, uh, for my presidency but this past year was pretty good but more importantly let's focus on the future and so as you uh, uh, start this year, think about the simple uh, crazy little frog as it relates to we can't jump backwards, so we can't go back and change the past, but we can change the future. And so uh, I'm excited about the upcoming year. We had a great summer uh, on campus uh, preparing for our students to get back. Obviously, there's always more work than uh, that we can ever get to as it, creates, uh, as it relates to creating the true environment that we want to create for our students. Uh, but I appreciate the commitment uh, that you make each and every day to serve this institution and ultimately our students and I would say that uh, thank you for choosing to be educators and when I say educators I'm not just talking about our faculty everybody on this campus are educators you've chosen to make an impact of this institution I talk about it on a regular basis about uh, we're here to change lives change futures your dreams begin here and uh, the, this is an important work that we are doing and, and obviously the challenges across the state of Oklahoma uh, in our region, uh, I truly believe in what we're doing and what each and every one of you do each and every day. And so, and, and so as I think about who we are as an institution, I also think about who are the students that we actually serve. And I shared this a little bit last year, but again, I think it gives us a frame, framework and a point of, of who we are and what we come to work for, my why. First generation students, nearly 60% of our students are first in their families to go to college or graduate. They're changing their trajectory, but more importantly, they're gonna change the trajectory of their next generation. That's my why, uh, really is one of my big points of uh, what I love about leading an institution and seeing young people and, and non-traditionals uh, come to school here and walk across the stage knowing that their path has changed forever. Uh, but I also would say that we also need to be cognizant that the fact that we have income restricted students, meaning they, uh, some, a lot of them come from low income. And so we have to be cognizant of that as we make decisions about this institution. Go back to that first gen or that low income students, sometimes they're not willing or to ask that question. And so we have to know and understand that uh, we very well could be their support group because they may or may not have it at home. And so we gotta be cognizant of that. And so we are uh, NEO, 
we are the NEO residential campus experience. And so I've got some good information to really get us kicked off this morning as it relates to where we are this fall. We should be feeling really good. Uh, obviously there were some announcements about uh, salaries in, in June and July that took place, but uh, here we are as it relates to enrollment. We had a great summer uh, with uh, summer enrollment being up nearly 22%. Uh, for the uh, for the summer, it was the highest uh, enrollment summer that I have seen as far as student credit hour production in the last four to five years. That's something to be excited about because the momentum has really kind of carried over into where we are for fall enrollment, and I think it says uh, uh, trending up over five percent. And as of this morning, we're up six uh, six percent as it relates to student credit hours. A little over 1,100 credit hours, and 106 more students than where we were a year ago. As you break that down into our new freshmen, as of this morning, 644 new freshmen enrolled for the fall. And this is the largest freshman class, the first class of 600 or more that we've had since 2019. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm for a clap about that. <laughs> We're up 18%. If you go back to uh, 19 and 18, uh, 19 there were 668 new freshmen. And in 2018, 699. So we do have some good positive feedback. I've been on the phone a couple of days, uh, last couple of days, just trying to touch uh, to see where we are. Uh, I've heard other institutions are down. I've heard institutions are down on credit hours, pretty much flat on credit hours. And I've heard some that are up as well. And so I feel like uh, we're in a great position as it relates to uh, our enrollment. And then housing. Again, when we talk about the NEO experience, uh, last year we had 560. 60 students that lived on campus. We are, uh, as of this morning, 632, 642 uh, uh, applicants uh, that are here. Of course, we know that uh, things can change, but if that happens uh, at 642, we're up more than 10% as it relates to on-campus living. And so again, keep that in mind as we do our work each and every day. So exciting, student, exciting news as it relates to enrollments. From an external funding standpoint, an excellent year. Uh, if you haven't worked with Dr. Bauer and her team yet uh, with the Title III project, you need to. Uh, the other day I heard it was 96 videos. I visited the next day and it was 104. How many videos today have you worked on with Academic? 107. 107, so uh, we're doing great uh, work as it relates to enhancing uh, uh, our online support of students. And so we appreciate the Title III grant that they're doing. Uh, we received through the legislature the last week of, uh, the, of the legislative session in May a $1.3 million grant for our nursing program. And uh, absolutely. And if you go down the list a little bit, you'll see another $300,000 for nursing and also another $100,000 from the Wyandotte Nation. That Wyandotte Nation uh, gift helped us go back to the legislature to incentivize them to invest in the nursing program that is a vital part of Northeastern Oklahoma and the four state region. So we're excited about that. And then the, the, uh, we celebrated the summer uh, uh, dedication ceremony in the uh, Cunningham Hall as it relates to the Mary Jane Gregg, uh, Mary Jane Gregg Sedoti uh, uh, estate gift and uh, $400,000. We're working right now on another $300 plus thousand dollar estate gift. And so really from a foundation standpoint, our strategy was if there was a will, there's a way. And going forward, I think we really need to be serious about it. if there's a will, we wanna be in it. Uh, <laughs> so uh, estate gifts are great. How about that? You hadn't heard that one before, huh? Uh, and uh, lastly, lastly on the list, uh, well, not last, but uh, we also received at the end of legislation the last week, the state legislature, $250,000 for the uh, rodeo arena. And so that has uh, been an issue uh, for a couple of years. Uh, and of course, it takes lots of money to put roofs on buildings. And we're making all the strides that we can. But uh, any time that we can get uh, earmarks from the uh, Oklahoma Department of Commerce, uh, we will take that. And so exciting about that. And the Cherokee Nations, $100,000 has helped us with bedding. And so the last couple of years, we have been uh, replacing all the beds in our housing, and uh, that was a, a significant impact. Moving on to uh, thinking about, uh, again, campus updates. Uh, since uh, since uh, we concluded the last year in May with commencement, we had a, a June board meeting, Oklahoma and m Board of Regents June uh, board meeting, and then also the state regents. We came to uh, uh, you all to say that 
our, our billing and all of our fees are not transparent as they need to be. And so we took one great stride forward as it relating to uh, removing 42 academic course fees. And so I'll fess up a mistake. We didn't get it all. And so we have facility fees that are associated with courses. And so that'll be something that we can take on and look at this next year. Again, we've got to be cognizant of what we're doing in a, in a, in a game of people, students can choose lots of different schools to go to college. And so to be competitive, we need to be very transparent as it relates to our cost structure. And so that was a great change that the Regents approved. And of course, if you have read anything in the, uh, in the news in June, uh, a couple of schools got, one school got turned down on their tuition fee request. I won't name it, you can go look that up. Uh, and then other people got raked over the coals. I got up to give my presentation to the state regents, and it's a 0.6% increase, by the way, and they said, thank you for cleaning up the books, and uh, we absolutely support that. So we're uh, taking uh, the step in the right direction. Increase that we hated to see was our meal plan, about 8%. Uh, again, inflation on food, uh, we've all seen it. The grocery store, uh, obviously, it impacts our students, and of course, that's the one thing that we actually had to do as it relates to the cost increase. And then most importantly, as it relates to a true campus update, is part of our strategic plan is to continue to invest in our people. And uh, very proud to be able to say that we uh, were able to do that this past year through state uh, legislature, providing state appropriations, and then our commitment to, uh, um, uh, for, they committed the resources for our faculty, and uh, of course we're committed to making sure that we can do better. Overload paid, adjunct pay was increased this past year as well. Uh, there was a communication that went out in June about that as well. And of course, uh, this past year, as a reminder, we did two administrative leave days for our staff. And of course, we'll carry those going forward. And then lastly, you know, uh, we did the cover the health cost, healthcare premium uh, increases this past year. And uh, you just never know with healthcare uh, what's going to happen. And, you know, I think that we're in a great position to uh, take that on if something like that were to happen this year. And I've said in our budget development process is the last thing I want to do is give you a pay increase and then turn around and take it away in January. And so we've got to be smart as it relates to how we invest. And there's nothing smarter and better for me to do is to invest in you all. Because without you, there is no NEO. So talk about deferred maintenance. Uh, so uh, obviously lots of projects. We're in a position that we can actually take care of some of these versus using the old, uh, I think Dave Harkins told me, bailing wire and duct tape. Uh, on some of the HVAC stuff uh, in the past. And so uh, here's a couple of updates that have happened. Uh, the nursing science building, we actually put a new HVAC system in this summer, this past summer. Uh, that was a building that flooded about 2007, 2008. Uh, VPAC, or excuse me, the v, uh, HVAC was not replaced at that time. Russell Van Dobson Harold uh, Dobson Harrell, uh, those uh, DOAS dedicated air systems have uh, been implemented, and more importantly, life safety. We've upgraded the life safety systems in all of uh, uh, all of the old traditional dorms, if you will. Very positive about that. Again, has no aesthetic uh, appeal to it, but is absolutely necessary to. Uh, that's what keeps me up at night. Is what are kids? What's going to happen in the overnight hours uh, when we're not paying attention? So very glad about that. Uh, Abel's, uh, to Ag and all the people that are located in Abel's, uh, we know that we have a rough leak. We do. Sorry, Student Support Services, I'm sorry. It's on the list. Uh, uh, March the 2nd, we had the hill damage. Nine roofs were uh, damaged across campus. Abel's and Dyer uh, were some of our flat roofs that, uh, that we are going to get to, and so those are in progress. All the shingle roofs have been done, and so uh, we also know that the boiler and chiller uh, we have contingency plans in place this year. That's old equipment. Supply chain impacts our ability to spend on a dime, okay? And so uh, the boiler is out, but uh, the, there'll be heat this winter. Uh, we're on our last leg as it relates to AC. And so let's just be real, but we're gonna fix things the right way. Uh, and that's where uh, we're in a position to do that. And so roof replacements I talked about. Uh, I've had a lot of questions about Student Activity Center. We could have band-aided that uh, uh, three months ago, two months ago for about $60,000. Uh, but instead, let's go spend the $150,000 to $160,000 to do it right. Uh, unfortunately, supply chain has impacted our ability to do that. And so I'm committed to making sure that we do things going right and invest tr uh, strategically in our, in our uh, facilities. Those projects, uh, just to uh, uh, give you an example of the uh, DOAS units, that previous slide, 
uh, total us about $2.3 million uh, on that previous slide that's out of our pocket uh, uh, for this project. And so uh, we've not paid for it with the ones that have completed. We've not necessarily paid for some of those yet. Uh, and so just uh, kind of keep that in mind as we go forward. Safety, uh, talk about something that keeps you up at night, uh, kind of referenced that a little bit ago. Uh, if you, how many of you all have participated already in the run, hide, fight training? Please raise your hand. And I would simply say that if you've gone through that, you see things differently. Is that a head nod yes of those that participated? Uh, Kendra came back from that, uh, that training and said, hey, I've got something to tell you, and, and, uh, and so I'm listening to her, and I finally said, Kendra, I said, I went through this training years ago, and I do not sit in a restaurant without looking at the front door. And, and I know that some of you all do that now after going through this training, and so we're trying to do what we can to equip our people to understand the circumstances that we face today. And we are a target just because of how we are spread out. Uh, the good news is, is Buddy Lambert, Chief Lambert, is a certified trainer, I said certified trainer, uh, not certified, uh, certified trainer. And, uh, and so we are trying to figure out how we can start doing that uh, across the board, not involving the LSU people that came in and did the training on campus. He's also in the process, and I say he, uh, Buddy, is in the process of pri putting together. He wrote for a grant and uh, secured it, and uh, we've got uh, safety apps that are going to be a part of what we will implement this fall. There's been some hiccups, but uh, that'll be something that we'll see this fall as it relates to your phone and then also desktop computers. Again, trying to invest in what uh, keeps me up at night and uh, concerns me as it relates to running a college or university. And then lastly is the night lock system. Some of you all uh, that are uh, classroom uh, teachers, many of our doors do not have locks. Those have been implemented in, in, in classrooms that do not, the night lock system has been implemented in those areas that do not have locks. Of course, that we do have some locks, and so we are trying to, uh, we've got a count of where we want to uh, install more of those, and of course, it takes time uh, in addition to money, but that's something that we are committing to uh, as it relates to campus safety. And without accreditation, we don't have jobs, and, uh, and if, we don't have, uh, if we don't have students, we don't, no accreditation equals no students, no students equals uh, no jobs for all of us. And uh, not, uh, not starting with the bottom one first, uh, but uh, starting with the top, the first two are celebrations. Uh, Physical Therapy Assistance Program, congratulations on your 10 year uh, renewal. So Don and I, is it, that's not 10 years. Okay, we're off a little bit, nine years, uh, but I guess it was 10 years when we got it. And so uh, congratulations, I know that a lot of hard work goes into that and uh, we're trying to determine if any of us are gonna be here when they go through that process, right? Claymate. So congratulations to you. Also the nursing program uh, spent a lot of work uh, preparing for their site visit uh, this past year. And of course, uh, we also have this new uh, site visit approved through HLC, not as, uh, not as intense uh, to prepare for that, but got that approval officially. And then also received continuing accreditation for the program and they've got to follow up on a couple of things this next year and so congratulations to our nursing program for all the hard work but the work's not done with that and so the most pressing thing is uh, we have uh, spent you all have spent lots of time and effort as it relates to the next one and that's our HLC uh, focused visit that takes place September the 11th and 12th uh, I promise you the work that you have been doing this past year under Dr. Grover's leadership. I know that Rachel and Jordan have also been a fall involved as well as our uh, consultant is very important as it relates to this upcoming visit. And so um, uh, we're planning for that, uh, have been planning for that for a year and a half. And so all of your work, we appreciate uh, everything that you've been doing. There's, we know that it's taken a lot of time and commitment to do that, but we feel like we're heading in the right direction for that site visit on September 11th. Another great uh, thing for us this year, again, I feel like it's a great year. Uh, our state legislature is supporting higher education again. Last year, they gave us a 1.99% increase. We'll call it two. Uh, and then this year, 8.7% as it relates to uh, state appropriations. $621,000 in new monies and uh, very excited about that. So when you see your state legislators, elected officials, 
be sure to say thank you for investing in, in, our, uh, in our campus, in our community uh, for, uh, for this upcoming year. You may ask what Section 13 offset capital, uh, it's capital projects, that's uh, our ability to do deferred maintenance programs. And the concurrent enrollment uh, program is they take your previous enrollment from the previous year and then reimburse you uh, for that this year. And so give an example, we, we knew that we took about a 15 to 20% de uh, uh, decline last year in concurrent enrollment. And so we saw that drop from, I think, around $220,000 to $184,000. But based upon our enrollments that I talked about a while ago, we feel like we're moving in the right direction. But we have to be cautious. Here's our trends. So if you look at the trends, uh, we're flat. In fact, if you look at the, uh, the last two columns, the difference, even though it really looks flat, is a difference of 383 credit hours, so a little less than 1%. And so we've got to understand that this is a jump this year that we've not experienced with our new freshman class and our overall enrollment that we've not seen in some, uh, in some in time. And so we've got to be cautious as we, as we make uh, decisions uh, for the institution. But I'm telling you, I'm excited about uh, forward, uh, the frog, as, it were, as where we sit today. Here's kind of a snapshot of uh, how we uh, basically spent uh, our way to the top. Uh, as it relates to two-year colleges in the last uh, 10, uh, I don't think it's 10 years, yeah it is, uh, more than 10 years, you can see that we increased, 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 and when I got here we were first or second place of a 12, there's 12 community colleges in the state of Oklahoma, and I can uh, please to say that we're now fourth uh, versus first. Uh, as it relates to holding and controlling uh, what we are putting on the backs of our students and their families. And so, uh, and then of course you, you have to understand your market. Crowder College, just a few miles away, it's about $171 per credit hour. And so we need to understand where we sit and uh, you'll see our actual cost here in just a little bit on the next page actually. And so there's our $1 increase. Uh, cost of tuition is now $100 and our fees have not changed so it's 164 at 75 cents per credit hour and so uh, again trying to understand that we've kind of held our cost as best as we can to better position us in a competitive environment that where we're at where we stand we talked about the eight percent increase we did not change anything as it relates to rooms but you can see the breakdown on the bottom as it relates to the meal plans and you can also see a new meal plan uh, listed there as well as again understanding who our students are uh, for the upcoming year, 8% approximately across the board on that. And again, knowing who our, who our students are, top line shows our total cost of attendance and how it's gone up. The bottom line shows maximum Pell. And uh, so give you an example. So the far, far left of your screen on Pell was $5,500. Today, it's $7,395, 7395 and David is not here because he is, uh, he and a lot of others are still helping students get enrolled. But we've got to know our students. And so maximum Pell at one point in time covered 80%, 86% of the cost of attendance. But even with our uptick with board and our $1 increase, you can actually see that middle line, which is the percentage of the coverage. So we actually trended up. And so the point is, is if we know a kid that is Oklahoma's promise and they are max Pell, we don't have to invest anything in them. We've got to have that message, not just out of our recruitment office, but uh, across this whole campus as it relates to running into students and being intentional about asking, are you receiving Oklahoma's promise? That's who we do best with. We take an input that may not be average, maybe a little bit below average, but we help them excel and do great things once they choose to be a part of us. So here's the overall budget for this upcoming year, just to kind of big, bu big buckets, if you will. There's about uh, $1.3 million in ARPA funds in this budget uh, for this year as it relates to the nursing, it, it may be 1.6. Uh, I'm looking at you, Micah. Is that 1.3 or 1.6? 1.6, all right, 1.6 uh, million. And so you look at this budget, help you understand uh, the thought processes that go on. We're building, we're starting to build a budget in March and April. We know what our legislative uh, appropriation is gonna be in May. We have to get it approved in June and we have no idea where the fall semester is gonna be. 
and, and, and so talk about a tricky, tr tricky business to, to get to this point. But uh, and again, if this 5% uh, gets us, uh, if we continue 5% through the entire academic year, that would increase uh, our credit hours by two, a little over 2,000 credit hours which is equivalent to about $340,000. And so you can see that we built a budget deficit of about $325,000 uh, for ENG. And so ENG is state appropriation and tuition and part of our fees auxiliary as it relates to housing and, and feeds uh, all of our activities, uh, the auxiliary side of things. So state appropriations, here's kind of a snapshot uh, of what our ENG state appropriations is up to 53% uh, for, for this current year. Somebody uh, might ask, uh, what is it in overall? It's about 27%. So the old saying is we used to be state funded, uh, then it was state supported, and now we're just state located as it relates to uh, uh, our state. No, let's do not say that to Steve Bayshore. We appreciate uh, our, our legislators uh, this uh, for their support uh, very, very much. Cash reserves, and so this again, uh, just kind of does a snapshot of where we were as of June 30, uh, estimated uh, $7.3 million, and this is a slide that uh, put back into play, but keep in mind uh, that uh, a lot of those deferred maintenance projects that we talked about uh, are either planned uh, or in progress are gonna take a deep uh, uh, cut into that, but we're good. We actually can breathe. We can make some uh, strategic decisions, but we've gotta be smart how we invest I do want to invest in our people. We owe it to our students to invest in where they live when they move away from home, but we've got to be cautious as we do those to make sure that we never get in a place that we don't have the ability to navigate as it relates to that. And so I feel good about that. And then one of the commitments that I uh, had to make when I got here was not to take us into any more debt. And so all the projects that we do going forward will not be through a master lease. It will require us to pay cash and, uh, and so uh, the debt load there is 6.1%. As you get to 7%, that's the maximum that you're supposed to be at. And so you can see that we've made great progress there. And so uh, good news, but really, more importantly, what's next? We're getting ready to host uh, a largest freshman class in several years. This group of uh, young people that are new freshmen that have chosen us for the NEO experience need some help need some help as it relates to maybe their academic preparedness, need some help because they don't have a family support unit at home, they need some help because they've not gotten out of the trends as it relates to what they did and experienced during COVID. We take great pride in what we call the NEO experience, right? I mean, and, and so that is living on campus, having the university experience, interacting with you, interacting with me, doing all of our sporting activities, our clubs and oars, but we folks, we've got to help them rethink. They are okay with doing this in a room when somebody is right across the room that they should be going and talking to. It's not happening at home. Is it truly a part of your job description? No, but I feel like it is what we've got to do to help people get They've chosen us, we wanna separate ourselves, and so I'm very interested in investing in our people and our students to make sure that they understand that we are the premier to your college residential campus, and we've gotta help them with connectedness. And so one of our investments uh, this year through Presidential Partners is to provide about $7,500 to help clubs and orgs. And so that's still being uh, developed. There'll be a luncheon that's scheduled here pretty quick with our sponsors because I want to recreate the NEO experience pre-pandemic. Uh, pre and so uh, we... <laughs> we need students involved. Retention data says those who are connected, connectedness, will have greater success. And so, and in the classroom, that's getting them there. And I know that Dr. Grover has some ideas and thoughts and has been working with some other leaders, uh, academic department chairs on that. And so we've got to think intentionally as it relates to that. And the student ready campus really kind of goes along with it. We can't control the variable as it relates to the academic uh, uh, preparedness. We've got to take them where they are. And, uh, and I heard uh, Maddie Haynes, and, and I think she gave quote to uh, credit to uh, Steve Dixon, is we gotta meet students where they are. And uh, there's a book called Campus Ready, uh, a, a Campus Ready, a, a Student Ready Campus. 
out there that uh, really relates to this, to says we can't control that variable. And so we've got to make sure that they know that student success, uh, our student success center is available to them. It's not just an office. It's an office that they do things. It's an office where they can help coach them. It's an office that we have academic tutors, but sometimes it is that encouragement from our faculty and our staff that are not in those spaces to get them there. That may mean, that may mean walking them to it. There is nothing uh, more scary, scary than a new 18 year old coming onto a college campus several miles from home, not knowing anybody, they find a connection in the classroom, they're scared to ask for help, but you know it as a professor, get them there. We have these services in place. That's what I'm talking about as it relates to the NEO experience and also uh, the connectedness uh, of, of this campus. Clubs and orgs, this is an awesome place, uh, and so we're gonna invest in that. And then of course, ultimately, I wanna continue to invest in our people, which means enrollment is always gonna be the key to our success. So we've got to have a campus culture outside of recruitment that uh, we are recruiting young people to come here. We've got to differentiate. Every time I meet a student, I, I talk to them. I met a girl yesterday from Greenwood, Arkansas, um, and um, noticed that she had a Greenwood Bulldog, and she didn't say Bulldogs, and I said, that's your mascot. She said, how do you know that? Uh, and so the point is to stop them and challenge them and give them, an, uh, you know, my, my, I can do this from my position, but I said, hey, who else are you looking at? And they said, another school. And I said, okay, when you go to that school, uh, see if you stop and speak. Bill, Bill was there yesterday, he heard that. I said, stop. see if you stop and speak to their college president when you walk across campus. This place is different. And, and you all are the ones that help, uh, help make it place different. And so as we think about uh, enrollment being the key to our success, uh, we are gonna spend another $7,500 to do faculty recruitment initiatives as it relates to academic departments. And so I need to make some money available through presidential partners so that if you have an idea uh, that is good for your program and or department from an academic side, you have access to resources. So uh, I know that I've had some conversations of what doesn't work that's been done in the past and there's other ideas that are out there. And so we want to invest in that and you'll be hearing more about that in the days to come. Alumni are the solution to all of our problems. Let that sink in. Alumni are the solutions to all of our problems. So I, I met with the nursing advisory committee last week, and I would say more than half of those people that came back from their, for, from their job are our graduates. We had a physical therapy grad, pinning ceremony the other day. We had two in the audience. I would assume those were probably some of our graduates uh, uh, that were here. They are our connection to workforce. They are our connection to the next generation of uh, Norsemen as it relates to recruitment. And if you go back to that previous slide that said all of our external fund check, those are, those are organizations that gave us those monies. They can be our solutions to your program as it relates to a financial investment to where we go. But fundraising doesn't happen uh, without friend raising. And so we have to be intentional about getting these people back on campus in your classrooms. I challenge you, I know some programs do this, but I challenge you to get alumni in your classroom as a guest speaker. They want to feel important. When we invite and, and reach out and say, will you come back to NEO, that makes them feel important and special. So think about that as it relates to homecoming. Uh, speaking of homecoming, that's an opportunity to get them back on campus. And so I know that there's an effort right now to get those uh, people back on campus because again, relationships matter before we can do fundraising. And, and it's not just about fundraising, it's lots of different things. And uh, think about the legacies that have gone through here uh, where you have a family and there's th you know, three generations uh, or four generations at this point. Uh, so it's pretty exciting. So ultimately, this is truly a great place. And I am so glad to be the president of NEO a &M College in Miami, Oklahoma. And when you think about a little school that has 1,800 students and there's 30 states and nearly 15 countries represented, nobody in rural Oklahoma, nobody in this region is doing that types of things to get this type of a diversity uh, of students on this campus. It's a special place. It's time to embrace who we are, right? The NEO experience. And we can't look backwards, we're frogs, we're going forward, and this is the place that uh, we're gonna do great things. We're all in this together, and I would say, row Norse row. Have a great year.
So one of the things that uh, I'm looking at my notes because I don't I don't do notes when I really speak uh, from the heart. And uh, obviously there were some facts, but there's some heart uh, today too. But there is no other profession that trains all other professions than this. So anyway, it's important. So logistics. So we have gotten it, uh, I think we've, we're going to do a much better job this year as it relates to lunch. It's served out in the atrium, and uh, we appreciate Drew and his crew uh, to have prepared the food that's uh, before us. You can go out either side, so but lines are, there's two lines in the atrium, you may have saw, uh, uh, saw that when you walked in, and so two lines, uh, and then you've got your uh, drink stations that are in here. And again, I really truly believe in what I said. This is a great place. You are the ones that make it. Let's go have a great year and uh, bon appetit.